Greetings and welcome to the RC Wall Vacuum Channel. Um, today's video is going to be the first in a series of videos I'm going to be doing on this particular project. And uh, what the project is, is a wireless uh, SCADA system for the uh, fifth scale two stroke powered uh, RC vehicles. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, SCADA is an acronym that stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. Um, and today, today I'm just going to be uh, doing some initial setup and some preliminary tests. And I'm going to be doing this project in phases. And this first phase is, first couple of phases are going to be just data acquisition only. Uh, and today in particular I'm going to get involved in the, uh, the engine temperature, both the um, exhaust gas temperature and the cylinder head temperature. And then I'll be soon after that implementing the RPM. And since I will be running this thing off the onboard LiPo, I'm going to be putting in the uh, battery, monitoring, vo uh, battery voltage monitoring circuitry too. What it consists of is uh, essentially two different parts, two core parts. Uh, it'll be a transmitter mounted on uh, the vehicle, and since I've been spending most of my time with, uh, doing mods on the Kraken, I'm going to work with the Kraken, in this case with its 50cc tailor. And anyhow, there'll be a, a module mounted on the, um, the vehicle, and then back at the pit area, there'll be a uh, receiver, and that will send back all the data that's coming in, and it'll be recorded onto an EEPROM, and then a uh, future upgrade will be give you the ability to put it into an SD card and pull it off as a CSV file for spreadsheets. Um, there'll be a, a, right now I just got a small OLED display on the, uh, the receiver and I'll probably be implementing a, a touch screen LCD eventually so you can, you can set uh, different parameters and be able to uh, grab the data, set an SD card, etc, etc. So like I mentioned earlier, th this uh, first phase is going to be just data acquis acquisition only. The supervisory control will come later on when I uh, install the accelerometer and a gyroscope and I'll be putting the, uh, the circuitry I've covered in uh, earlier videos on the kill switch. When that gets integrated in here, that'll give it the supervisory control aspect of it. But uh, anyhow, for now I'm just going to get involved with the data acquisition and uh, let's go over what some of that stuff's going to be. So over here on the bench I got the two modules set up uh, temporarily until I can get uh, to later in this video. I'll, I'll get the uh, two uh, sensors put in there and we'll go do a live test to uh, see what, what happens. But anyhow, uh, to the left is the transmitter and to the right there is the uh, receiver. So over here the transmitter. This right here is going to, this is the uh, EGT sensor. Uh, I have to weld this little plug into the pipe, which I'll be doing today, and then that gets attached in the pipe. Uh, this ring here is a CHT cylinder head temperature sensor and that goes under the spark plug and they both get fed back into these, uh, amp these uh, uh, thermocouple amplifiers. They're K-type thermocouples by the way. And oh, one note too, if you ever do this yourself, just remember when you go to weld this pipe fitting on here, that's a tapered thread. Luckily I caught that before I even tried to do it. I'm surprised I didn't go ahead and weld that and forget about it, but anyhow, I haven't so far. Anyhow, then we got the processor, and then here's the wireless uh, data module right here that uh, sends, sends the uh, data out. As far as these modules go, they're uh, line of sight, you know, easily five miles with them. But uh, you, you can start getting in a little more hilly area or trees, so it, it cuts down. But uh, certainly 500 yards will not be any kind of an issue. Uh, any kind of track size you're going to get with an RC vehicle, this will cover it with, without any problem. And just uh, when I was writing the software for it, I wanted to be able to mimic, even though I'm not doing RPMs today, uh, I wanted to be able to write the software and deal with the RPM coming in. So I got another microcontroller that's sending pulses into the, uh, this and so I can transmit the RPM out to keep the packets consistent for the transmission. So for the, uh, to mimic the, the uh, RPM until I get in there and figure out how I'm going to hook it up, and uh, that'll be in a future video. Uh, I'm just sending it in like this of these pulses and e even at uh, 10,000 RPM you're only looking at a uh, 160 about 170 Hertz signal which in the world of microelectronics is pretty damn slow so I'm assuming a uh, to, for a 10,000 RPM there I'm, I'm sending it uh, 166 Hertz and uh, a 10 percent duty cycle I'm figuring that's what the kind of uh, high pulse we're going, to be, going to be getting off of this so from the transmitter, I'm pretty much sending all three parameters out as, as fast as uh, the radio will take them. So you get good up, up, upgrades, or uh, updates I should say, on the data. So for the receiver, which will be located at the pit area, 
got this module. And obviously these will be packaged up way different and uh, nice convenient little packages. And I probably will have the receiver running off a of LiPo too. So anyhow, uh, once again, I got the radio module, the processor, and that chip right there is a uh, EEPROM where the data's going to be going initially, and then you can just play it back onto the, onto the display until I get the SD card configured in there. And then over here's the OLED. Let's see if we can zoom in. I got right now. I just have it up and uh, running the, uh, the two thermocouples and the pulse coming off the uh, pulse generator, mimic the RPM. So there's a closer view of the OLED. They're a nice bright display and you can see them pretty well outdoors. So the first task for today is to weld uh, the little uh, adapter for the EGT sensor into the pipe. And uh, let's go over and go over that problem. So this is EGT sensor and so I gotta get that in there. And these are meant for to go into larger application like a snowmobile or something like that. But uh, it can be adapted in here. Now the, the, uh, the whole reason for this project besides just being another engineering project is uh, all you as, as you engine tuners all know that uh, engine temperature is a huge barometer of engine performance and engine function, and you can find out whether you got impending issues with uh, with too lean of a condition or too rich of a condition. And being able to monitor both the cylinder head temperature and the EGT temperature are, are pretty good too because they're very helpful because you, know, you can you can you can monitor the two together and they should really trend together. And they said, you don't start trending, they're not trending together, you know you might have a problem. You know, anything from, you know, you might have some fuel issues or you know, you got some detonation going on, uh, whatever the case may be, or um, it, it can be easy, easily seen, especially when you can tie it in with your RPMs. And that's the reason I want to have the RPMs, because then you can actually, if you go out and run the thing where you normally would, let it record, and then go back in and uh, scan it, and you can tell, you know, you start seeing, um, a high, high exhaust temperature at um, lower throttle levels or mid-level, then you know you got probably an idle mixture or low, I should say a low-range low mixture thing going on. Where you start seeing it uh, at a higher RPM, you start seeing the higher higher temperatures, which you kind of would expect that. But you start seeing real high temperatures, then you know you got a lean condition going on the, on the high end. You might want to change it around a little bit. So the next product that comes up is where do you mount it in the vehicle or on the pipe? Um, I think it seems to be a lot of uh, mixed opinions on where that, where that goes, but uh, you'd think that uh, the, as far as the engine gas temperature or exhaust gas temperature goes, you'd want to be up as close to the, uh, the, the combustion chamber and piston as you, as you can get, but I don't believe that actually is true in reality because uh, as you know, uh, as these two strokes are running, exhaust is being sent out the pipe while the new cooler, uh, fresh air and fuel and oil mix is coming in gets uh, part way out the pipe before the acoustic wave uh, converges down here and sends, it, sends comes back through, pushes the mixture back in there. So at this header, the earlier header section, it could overall be a slight bit more, uh, cooler than back a little bit farther. So from what I can tell, six, about, about five and a half to six inches on a 50cc from the piston skirt is about optimal where you want to be. But unfortunately, uh, I am limited where I can put it in here based on the dynamics of uh, this pipe placement in here and the size of this thing and be able to clear everything. So I'm going to take a closer look here where it's going to end up going. So where I'm going to end up putting anything is going to be right up underneath here and uh, it should clear down in there once it's welded up in there. And uh, it, it, it gives me like four and three quarters of an inch from the skirt which isn't too bad. It might not work out to be such a problem. So uh, let's get uh, work on getting this pipe prepped and we'll get this welded in. So uh, I got the hole in the pipe position now and unfortunately I'm farther up in the header than what I wanted to be uh, in order to be able to get there and weld it. I'm back to like around four inches which it shouldn't be too bad. We'll see how that works out. And um, they for some reason recommend a half inch hole which seemed to be excessive. So I uh, Drop that back with a tenth of an inch or so. And, uh, so I just got this clamped in here and I'll take a weld it in place and uh, it should be ready for a live fire.
So I got the fitting welded in there now, and um, being that this pipe is not stainless, I didn't bother to back purge it with argon. Well, I was tempted to do it anyhow just to blow the uh, oil smoke away from the bottom or the, uh, the back side of the weld, but I decided against it, it's more of a hassle than it'd be worth. So, the next thing I do is probably the most important step of this uh, welding this thing in, and that's go clean the uh, chips out of the pipes so they don't end up in the side of the piston and the cylinder walls. So, I'll take care of that, we'll put this thing together, and then uh, be ready to give it a live fire. So, the victim, or I mean, uh, patient is wired up here now. And uh, out here in the back part of the front part of the shop, actually. And uh, there's the uh, transmitter section. Within the, the board to the right is the uh, pulse generator. That's the reason the laptop here, because I had to be able to set the uh, pulse to fake the RPM. So any RPM numbers you see up there are fake right now. Temperatures are not. So there's the CHT sensor installed. And then back in there, I don't know if you have to catch it with a camera or not, but there's the uh, EGT sensor. And wired up to there. So let me go back in the main part of the shop, uh, which will be the back part of the shop. And uh, the camera's set up on the uh, display. All right, so I'm out here now at the vehicle. Do the kill switch ready to get kill switch. Hopefully it starts after all this. She's gonna go. It's gonna get loud for a second here. I'm not going to fully run it today, up, up to all the way to the temperature. I just want to make sure this, this uh, setup will actually work. So right now I'm doing floating point math in the transmitter. So I'm going to be converting it over to integers, so I, there's no, you don't need to see that fraction of the temperature in there. Plus it also cuts uh, EEPROM storage in half, and also uh, data transfer over the radio uh, cut in half too. Oh, she shut off. Well, it kicked off because of that button I got in that uh, battery box I put in, it, 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 it uh, popped out. I got to replace that. I'm definitely not happy with that uh, that switch, but I ain't worried about that. So I got to reset and go back out and fire it back up again. See if we can bring the temperature up more. I'm not sure what's with that switch. It must have too, too weak of a spring on it. I don't want to get too carried away with the throttle, so I just got it strapped onto some solids and I don't need that thing taken off. What you can definitely see is you start hitting a little more throttle. It jumps up in temperature. So all in all, I'd say uh, this is going to be good to go to the next step, which will be the RPMs. So I got to kill it from in here. So all in all, it's, it's actually uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it went. Uh, definitely going to move it into the, the next step. It's going to be the uh, the RPM. 
Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to get it out of there. I wanted to go off a Hall effect sensor initially, but I might have problems. A Hall effect sensor on a magnet inside the uh, flywheel, but I may have a tough time getting a cable out of there without machining the, uh, the block. And I don't want to mess that uh, beautiful tailor up. So the other possibility is I'm going to tap into the primary side of the coil and do some conditioning on it and optically couple a signal back to deal with that. But either way, that'll be taken care of. And um, so, like I said, the next video is then I'll deal with the RPM. And actually, I'm glad I shut it off when I did because uh, this thing was twisting. It was, this front tire was going to catch this sawhorse, and that probably would have been an ugly situation. I don't need that. So in the meantime, um, stay stay tuned, and uh, there'll be more more uh, videos coming out on this. And I got some other videos, including uh, I'm working on making a two uh, a full uh, Lozy 5T 2.0 clone uh, using a tube chassis. Uh, with a roll cage all built into it to eliminate the, flat, the bottom plate, but uh, that'll be coming up in the next few videos and uh, Then an anodizing. Anodizing might be one of the next uh, non-electrical videos I'm going to be doing. So in the meantime, uh, thanks for watching.